Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar. Consider a square whose side length is equal to 1. You pick two points at random and calculate the distance between those points. What is the average value of the distance? When you pick points at random, naturally sometimes the points will be very far apart. Other times, the two points will be much closer together. The question is, Given all the different ways that you can pick two points at random, what will the average distance be between the two points? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. We'll approach the problem analytically. We'll place the unit square in the Cartesian plane. We can give each of the two points an x and a y coordinate. To figure out the distance between the two points, we consider the difference of the x-coordinates and the difference of the y-coordinates. These are the distances of the legs of a right triangle. Therefore, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and come up with the distance formula for the distance between the two points. This will be the square root of the sum of the square differences between the x and the y-coordinates. So how will we figure out the average value of this function? The first method I'll present is we can generate random numbers for our coordinates, come up with a distance, and then take the average over many trials. The next method I'll present is we'll get an exact answer with integrals. So let's first come up with an estimate. Let's estimate our answer numerically. We want to generate four coordinates, the x and y coordinates for the first point, and the x and y coordinates for the second point. In each trial, we'll compute the distance between these two points. We'll then take the average over many trials. We can generate a random coordinate between 0 and 1 using the rand function, which generates a random number between 0 and 1. In each trial, we'll take the distance by calculating the square root of the difference of the x coordinates squared and then adding it to the difference of the y-coordinate squared. This will give us a distance in one trial. We'll copy this down over 10,000 trials. And now we can figure out the average by taking the average over all of these trials. So we'll take the average distance over 10,000 trials. And this will give us an estimate of 0.52. We figured out our answer is about 0.52, but what is it exactly? Let's figure out using integrals. We could naively try and integrate the distance function over its domain. But we'll end up with a quadruple integral which will not be tractable. In order to figure out this integral, we will have to do several clever substitutions. The first thing we'll do is we'll reduce the number of independent variables. Instead of considering each coordinate, we'll only consider the distances in the x direction and the y direction. We have the absolute value of delta x and the absolute value of delta y. We'll consider distances between 0 and 1. We can rewrite our distance formula in terms of delta x and delta y. Before we integrate it, we have to take into account that delta x and delta y will have different distributions than the standard uniform distribution. Originally, each of our coordinates was drawn from a uniform distribution, which had a probability density function of 1. We now want the absolute value of the difference between two standard uniform distributions. This is well known to be a triangular distribution we end up with a double integral. In our probability density function, we have two factors of two, which come out to be a factor of four. We then have the distance formula in terms of the x and y distances, and then we have the one minus x times one minus y to take into account the probability density functions. So now, how do we figure out this double integral? We're going to make a change into polar coordinates. We'll let x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Instead of integrating over the whole unit square, 
will only integrate over the lower half triangle and then will double the value of this integral. The angle theta ranges between 0 and the 45 degree line. So theta ranges between 0 and pi over 4. Next we want to know the range of the radius r. r starts out as 0 and it will range depending on the angle theta. Since the base of this triangle is always 1, the value for r will be 1 divided by cosine of theta, which is also equal to secant theta. We can now rewrite our integral. We have to remember that we're only integrating over the lower half, so we want to double the value of the integral. We also want to remember that we have an extra factor of r when we change into polar coordinates. So our polar coordinates integral will look something like the following double integral. We have the extra factor of 2 because we're only integrating over the lower half. And then we're going to rewrite our distance function and density function in terms of polar coordinates, which we then multiply by r, and then we have dr d theta. We also have our new limits of integration. So now let's go ahead and substitute and try and figure out this integral. We input our polar coordinates for the, for the distance function and for the probability densities. We can then simplify this. We have r squared cosine squared of theta plus r squared sine squared of theta. This will simplify to be just r squared because cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1. So our entire square root ends up just being r. We have technically the absolute value of r, but we're only dealing with positive r, so it just ends up being r. We can expand this out, and we have a polynomial in terms of r. This will not be too hard to compute. We'll substitute in our limits of integration, and it simplifies tremendously into one single integral. So now we have to integrate over theta. This is actually a fun little integral. The secant cubed of theta is a famous integral, and I provided a link in the video description. I'll just go ahead and use the formula here. We now substitute in our limits of integration, and we end up with the following result when all is said and done. 2 plus the square root of 2 plus 5 times the natural log of square root of 2 plus 1 all over 15. And this is approximately 0.521, which is very similar to what we got in the spreadsheet. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google+, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Shawwalker. And if you liked the video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.